G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. So I'm a little lost for words in explaining this piece because at no time during the creation of it did I have a bloody clue what I was doing. I've still been having some trouble with my twitchy hands so I thought I might pull out the dusty old acrylics and give them just one more try. I figured unlike colour pencil where I have a certain limit to the amount of corrections I can make to a wobbly line, if I make a boo-boo with the paint I can just keep going over the top of it again and again and if the paint ends up an inch thick well maybe not that far but you get the idea. The only problem is I've never really had too much luck with paint. It's gooey, it's wet, it always ends up in my hair and if one of the kids ends up interrupting me then the paint ends up drying on the palette and the first blocking in layers always look so dang rough that I end up feeling like all I've done is ask a toddler to smear some colours on a really, really expensive surface. But the only way to learn is to get a brush in my hand and start trying. My first step was to slap in that background. I didn't have the emotional energy to tackle both the background and the foreground, so I mixed up a big pile of greens and I just got that onto the wood. I wrapped up my palette of paint that I had left over and I popped that paint into the freezer. This stopped that acrylic from drying and it meant that when I inevitably stuffed up that background, um, I had something of that exact same colour where I could just pull out the perfect colour to hide my mistakes. And yes, I ended up using that. Then I quickly blocked in the shapes of the frog. This ugly, ugly layer was there just to make sure I had everything in the right place with vaguely the right colours. And I kind of ran out of enthusiasm when I got to his weird froggy feet. Uh, so I just kind of stopped and this project sat on my easel as I marinated on thoughts of how I could possibly continue. Now, although I had put this piece down, I did not put it away. Out of sight is out of mind and all, and I have by far too many neglected projects half finished and tucked away in the pile of shame. No, I had promised myself that this piece would be finished even if it killed me. So I popped it up on the easel that faces directly into my face every time I open the studio door. This half-completed block-in would sit in judgment every time I opened that door, ensuring that I could not accidentally forget about its existence. And so, a couple of weeks later, I did pick it back up. I told myself I would just work on a section at a time, like I would with my colour pencils. No stress. If all I completed was an eye, then so be it. And with that, I finally started to actually get a bit of a rhythm going. And that's where a lot of experiments happened. Unfamiliar with the, any of the marks that any of my brushes can make, I just picked up random pieces of paint, splashed it down over and over again until it looked good. Section by section I went down, breaking it down into little parcels that I could tackle. Eye, tick, nose, tick, stripes, but tick, belly, tick. Trying not to stress too much about making a masterpiece, just making that one element at a time. I own a shameful amount of paintbrushes for somebody who doesn't paint that much. And getting to know the marks that each of them could make was a huge part of the learning experience I found in this piece. I found the most wonderful, dried out, super crusty, crunchy old brush that made the perfect stippling marks I needed for that little froggy skin texture. And I found this amazing dagger brush that I could use to make really beautiful long straight lines, especially that one from his mouth and the stripes that go down his back. I had a lot of brushes to clean at the end of this piece. The hardest part by far was his feet. I struggled to mix frog foot brown. I think I mixed every shade of poopy pink and icky brown imaginable. I struggled to get the shapes right. I struggled to get the shine in the right places. And once again, I did kind of give, come close to giving up. But the rest of him was looking so good. That, mm, <laughs> Uh, I quickly diverted my attention to the log, which needed quite a bit of adjustment from my drawing to look right. And I got a chance to use that frozen paint to fix up that whole area. 
Um, it did end up coming together really quickly by using another old crusty brush and getting some really interesting dry brushing techniques going. Um, I'm really happy with the way that log turned out. And so I had to come back to the feet. And with one marathon session of layers upon layers upon layers and trying and trying again, suddenly I had a pair of frog feet and I could call it done. So here's the final piece. I was stunned how this turned out. I love it. Um, unfortunately, I photographed this after I varnished it, so the photos are a little bit glary, sorry. But I am so stoked to see how this turned out. I'm really, really glad I persevered and pushed myself to finish this one. I would like to take a moment to thank my patrons. A full recording of this painting is available. I didn't narrate this one, mostly because I still don't know what I was doing, um, but if you would like to see how it came together and just have a little watch over my shoulder, then it is available right now. For now, that's all I have. Usually I do a wrap up at about this time of year, but last year was bloody awful. Barely worth a wrap up. I'll sum it up in a few words. Cass struggled with her health and barely got any art done. There, done. <laughs> Boring. Let's move on. Um, I hope you all have an amazing new year. Much love to you all and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.